everybody, I'm Colleen. Um, one summer when I was in college, I was very fortunate to have the illustrious job of unpaid intern. Um, you can't hear me? That, I've never been told that in my life, ever. Um, I had the illustrious job of being an unpaid intern. Yes, very hard to get jobs. Um, it was still the best job I have ever had. I was on a trail crew at a small park, national park in South Dakota called Wind Cave National Park. As you could tell by the name, the focus is the cave. I was on a trail crew. I only saw the three people I worked with. Um, but it was really the best job. Our boss was totally chill. He was like, maybe high all the time. Um, just like, go to the trail and work on it do whatever you need to do. And we were like three college kids, you know, like got into this job and we just were like super industrious. But it was great. We would drive in our awesome like double super cab 1960s white truck to whatever trail we were working on, get our equipment, hike out, do whatever we needed to do, take a nap at lunch and then work some more and hike out. So I have so many great memories from this summer. But my favorite one um, centers around the bison. You may also know it as the buffalo, but it's the bison. Um, so here's the thing about bison. People think they're really big cows. They're not. Um, they're very dangerous. They are, can range between anywhere between one and two tons, five, six and a half feet tall. Um, they can run 40 miles an hour and they're very agile. I once saw one run up a hill like this steep and jump over a guardrail at the top to get under the highway. So these things are no joke. And when you're on a trail crew in the prairie, you're pretty much like bison meat. Um, and in, at some point in the summer, they go in heat. And at that point, the, the bulls are really dangerous. And then they have the calves. And then the cows are really dangerous because you may be, you know, attacking their children or whatever. Um, so we had a very healthy fear of them, um, but not, not everybody did or does. Um, at least once a year, I was in the Black Hills of South Dakota, there was a goring, some of them fatal. Um, we had signs all over the park that said, bison are dangerous, do not approach. I'm gonna let you guys in on something uh, for anybody who hasn't worked in the tourism industry. People in the industry call everyone else tourons. <laughs> Especially if you're from Florida. I am not kidding when I say more than one person approached us and said, what are the dangaroos? Bison are dangerous, not dangaroos. Um, so anyway, uh, <laughs> for the most part, this, this park was prairie. There was some wooded areas. So one day we're working on a trail, working on a trail. I don't know what, really what we're doing. It was a pretty steep trail, somewhat wooded. I was separate from the rest of my crew. They were at the top of the, the, the trail. Not too many trees around me. So all of a sudden I hear, Kali, bison! And I'm like, and I, I just, uh, just climb up a tree. I don't know what, it, like, I'm like, a herd is like charging. I don't know what's coming. So I climb up a tree. And I'm waiting, and I'm waiting, and I'm waiting. And all of a sudden, this, like, bull bison comes, like, ambling slowly down the trail. Like, I don't know, the five minutes later, I don't know. In this context, five minutes seems like a long time. I had a lot of time. I didn't need to get up the initial tree. I got up. <laughs> we're on a really steep hill, so at some point, we're kind of equidistant. The bison's coming down the hill. I'm staring at it. It sees me, and it stops and just kind of looks at me. I look at him. And it is at this point that I take stock of my situation. The tree I am in is basically a sapling. <laughs> It's like the width of a fireman's pole. If this bison wanted to, it could just rub up against it and down it would go. Not only that, I was like five feet off the ground. So again, I was 
pretty much at the will of this bison. And I think it probably looked at me and was like, what is this moron doing like three feet off the ground in a sapling? It probably thought I was so insane that it was like, I'm gonna get out of the way. So it like kind of came down some more and then it sidled off to the side. And like, it, it was so weird. It just kept like stopping and looking at me and I was like, oh God, just please just keep going, keep going. And it did, it eventually it just, it kept going and I was fine and like, I ran back up the trail after it went, and my trail crew, like, they came down, they were like, what, that tree? I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Not only that, it had no branches. I still don't know how I did it. I'm not a shimmier. I still don't know how I did it. But I guess the moral of the story, if there is one, is choose a bigger tree. <laughs> Colleen, everybody. 